Good morning, my grade 10 students. As you can see, I'm no longer in my garage. What I've decided to do is take this show on the road, and I'm broadcasting live with my buddy Joe Exotic down here in Oklahoma. All right, so hopefully uh, you were able to work through last day's questions. Uh, feel free to uh, email me any questions that you may have, and I'll try to answer them. As I said, this is a big work in progress trying to figure everything out. Uh, Edsby is presenting issues, lots of different platforms are. We're going to work this out, we're going to get through it somehow. If you have any other ideas of how I can present this information to you that may be beneficial, let me know and uh, I'll investigate that. Uh, that being said, remember, use each other, turn to each other, uh, text each other, FaceTime, Zoom, whatever it might be uh, to try to get through this. All right, today we are going to move on with trigonometry. So let me grab my notes here so I don't forget anything. So this is going to be lesson 7.3. And let me just make sure that I'm getting all this on the camera. There we go. All right, so trigonometry. Basically, trigonometry is triangle, and metry or metrics is measurement. So we're dealing with triangle measurements. And this unit uh, is going to be for right angle triangles only. So for this next unit here, we're only dealing with right angle triangles. Now, if you recall, back in grade nine, uh, you were given a triangle. Uh, let's pretend it's right angle right now. So uh, you might have been given two angles and you could use your 180 rule to figure out the third. If you recall, 180 degrees in a triangle, interior degrees, subtract the 90, subtract the 67, and you would have the value of x. In grade 10, we're gonna learn how to find, if, uh, find out other angles if you only have, say, one angle. And we're also gonna extend that and we're gonna learn how to find out side lengths as well, depending on the angle that you have. So with trig, what we do is we're, we're finding missing angles and missing side lengths, and it's based on ratios. So for example, um, I could figure out this angle if I knew how long two of the sides were. And what I do is I use the ratio of those two sides. So we have, say, a four to three ratio of these two sides. And I can use that information to find out the missing angle. How do I do that? Well, somebody's already gone before you and they figured out all the possible triangle ratios of the different sides and they put all those numbers into your calculator for you. So today's lesson, we're gonna uh, begin to explore how to use those ratios that are already in your calculator to find missing sides and missing angles. All right, before we do that, before we do that, we need to learn a few things or a couple other things about uh, triangles. So we're gonna be dealing with right angle triangles only in this unit. Let's say I wanted to find this angle right here. In trigonometry, we use the theta symbol, the Greek symbol for theta. That's gonna be our unknown angle. Now, uh, if this is the angle that we're trying to find, we need to be able to label the three sides of a triangle. The first side is always the easiest, and that's this side here. This is the hypotenuse. And we know the hypotenuse is the, the long side of a right angle triangle. It's the side that does not meet at a right angle. The other two sides are the somewhat trickier ones. And these are the ones that are, are most uh, easily uh, when mistakes are made. If this is the angle theta that we're trying to find in this triangle, this side over here, across from it, is the opposite side. And the side that makes up part of that angle, we call the adjacent side. 
And so the opposite and the adjacent side changes depending on which angle we're trying to find. So for example, in another right angle triangle, if I want to find this angle here, theta, this is my hypotenuse. It doesn't change, it's the, the side that doesn't meet the right angle. But in this case, across from it, this is the opposite. And this side that abuts it is the adjacent side. So you have to make sure going forward that you understand uh, how to label the triangle. The opposite, which is across from the angle that we're trying to find. The adjacent, which is part of that angle and the hypotenuse. All right, moving on. So in trig, we have three basic ratios that we can use. And these ratios are sine, cosine, and tangent. And these get abbreviated to sine, Oops. Cosine and tan. So moving forward, these are the abbreviations that we'll use. These are the abbreviations. You may have noticed those buttons on your calculator as well. You use these based on which information you have. So for example, if I have a right angle triangle here, and actually, uh, let me back up here. I'm gonna show you what these ratios are. So sine, the sine ratio is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine ratio is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent ratio is the opposite over the adjacent side, or divided by the adjacent side. Now, how do you remember this? Perhaps you have uh, heard this mnemonic before. I'll write it up at the top of our board here, and we'll refer to it. And that mnemonic is so ka toa, so ka toa. So sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse and tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So we use whichever one of these that we have the information for. So if I can refer back to this uh, triangle here, if this is the angle that we want to find, and we know that the hypotenuse is five, and this side over here is three, the first thing that I would do, and I, I strongly suggest you do this for your homework for the next couple days, is label the sides. So in this case, five is my hypotenuse. Directly across from the angle of theta that I'm trying to find is my opposite side, and this is my adjacent side. Now in this question, I have opposite information, and I have hypotenuse information. So I go up to my mnemonic here, and I find the one that has O and H. So in order to uh, solve this angle, I would use my sine ratio. I would use sine equals opposite over hypotenuse to solve for that angle, and I'll show you how. For, uh, sometimes you can use more than one. So if I have all three sides of my triangle, I could obviously use then a, a cosine function because I have a and h and I could use uh, my tangent function because I have opposite and adjacent as well. Sometimes you can use one, sometimes you can use two, sometimes you can use three. It depends on the information you have. Once again going back here I only have o and h so that takes cosine and tangent out of my possibilities. I can only use sine to solve this one. For today we are going to use just tan. So we're gonna practice using our tan function today. And I guess after the Easter holiday, next Tuesday, I'll post the next video and we'll start to explore uh, cosine and uh, sine. So today we're just gonna use 
tan. All the triangles that we have will have opposite and adjacent information. All right, so uh, the tangent ratio, ratio, not the ration, tangent ratio can be found using your calculator. And we always round to four decimal places. I shouldn't try to talk and write at the same time. So round to four places. All right. So we have a right angle triangle here and we actually know in this case that the angle is 65 degrees. So we can use that, we can use our calculator to find out what the actual ratio is. And that ratio is of course, this, uh, the ratio that you were given here is based on the length of the opposite side and length of the adjacent side. So we, uh, we don't need that at this point. We're, I'm just gonna show you how to do this on your calculator. So writing this down, we have tan, 65 degrees, and I'm, uh, I'm, we're just working on tan today. Now, on your calculator, you should have, and I don't know if you can see this on mine here, but I have a, a sine, cosine, and tan function. Depending on your calculator, you're gonna have to figure out which order you do it in. I know I tried this on my iPhone and it's the opposite. So in this case, and what I mean by that is, in this case, if I hit the tan button and I put type in 65 degrees and hit equals, I get an answer of 2.1145. And you can see that's to four decimal places. On my iPhone, I believe I have to type in 65 and then hit the tan button in order to get that. So every calculator is a little bit different in the order that you punch it in. Let's pretend that this is 80 degrees. The ratio for that then would be tan 80. So if you type in tan 80 on your calculator, that stored ratio will pop up for you. And it's five decimal six seven one three what was actually on my calculator screen is five decimal six seven one two eight rounded to four decimal places so that's the first step not only are you going to be using uh, trigonometry in math going forward, you'll definitely be using it next year in physics. Physics uses a lot of trigonometry, so you want to make sure you understand this. Now, if we already have the value of tan, so we have the value of tan, and we can then use it to solve for the angle. And in order to do that, we use the inverse tangent. And it's written like this, tan to the power of negative one. If you look on your calculators again, you're gonna notice that right above the sine, cos, and tan buttons, you'll probably see the inverse functions of them, or you will see them. Uh, on my particular calculator here, in order to access those, I have to hit the shift button. So if I hit the shift button and then sign, I get the inverse function of that. So make sure you know how to do that. So for example here, So tan A, if let's say we know for angle A, we know what the ratio is. 0 decimal 0, 8, 7, 5. So if I've taken, so we know tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. 
If I took the length of the opposite side, divided it by the length of the adjacent side of my imaginary triangle, this is the number I would get. This is the ratio. I can now use that to find out uh, the angle, that theta, that we wanted to find. So we have uh, this here, and that becomes tan negative 1, 0 0.0875, and we get 5 degrees. So if you hit uh, the, the inverse function of tan button and punch in that number, you're multiplying it by that number, you find out that the angle is 5 degrees. We could do this all over again. So let's say in a different triangle, we take our opposite, divide it by the adjacent, and we get a value of 0 0.2679. To find out the angle, we would do tan, the inverse function of tan times 0.279, and you could see that we get a 15 degree angle. That's all there is to it. Very, very simple. So I have a few word problems here for you or a few uh, practice questions. Let's do those. And then I will sign off for the Easter weekend. All right. So in this question, I want you to... Find tan B, and I want you to find the measures of angle B and angle C. So we have a triangle here. This only works with a right angle triangle. If it's not a right angle triangle, you cannot do this. Uh, let's call this triangle A, B, and C. And I do know that uh, this side is five. This side is 13 long, and this side is 12 long. So in this case, we know three side lengths. We know one angle, right there, 90 degrees. This question is asking us to find tan B. So we want to find out what this angle is. So that's our theta. So let's do that. We know that tan theta, and we're gonna, today we're using tan. So we know that it is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Sorry, opposite over the adjacent. I misspoke there. All right. So in this case, uh, our, our theta is angle B. Now I'm going to label this up. This is our hypotenuse. This is our opposite, and this is our adjacent. So I want opposite over adjacent. I'm going to do 5 over 12. And so tan B is equal to 0 decimal 4167 when rounded. So that's our, our ratio. Our second step here, and I'm realizing that you might not be able to see that, so I'll do it down here is we want to find out what this angle is. So we're going to use our inverse function of tan, multiply it by the ratio that we just found, and we get 23 degrees. We now know that this is 23 degrees. Degrees. It's just that easy. Now, in order to find angle B and angle C, we actually, we've just found angle B. Angle C, you can just use your 180 rule. So 180 minus 90 minus 23, and I believe that gives you 67 degrees. So 180 minus 90 minus 23 equals 67 degrees. There you go. We have just found an angle based on side lengths. Let's do another one. Right angle triangle. I know that this angle is 48 degrees. And I know that 
This is 9.2 centimeters or millimeters long or something like that. All right, so let's find out what the value of X is. So I have here 48 degrees. This is my hypotenuse. This is my opposite across from it and this is my adjacent. In order to figure out the opposite, I am gonna use the opposite and I'm gonna use the adjacent. So that's O and A. I use my tan function. So in this case we have tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, our basic tan ratio. Let's plug in the information that we know. So I know that theta in this case is 48 degrees taken from there. The opposite, I don't know, it's X. And the adjacent, I do know, it's 9.2. I can put this over one and cross multiply like we did last day. 1048 times 9.2 is 1048 times 9.2. And that, and one times X is X. 1048 in the calculator, you will get a number of 1106. So I typed in, I hit the tan button and put 48 degrees. And we're gonna multiply that by 9.2. And we get an answer of 10.2. So we just figured out that X is 10.2 long by using our ratios. All right, two, two more quick little questions and then we will be done. I just wanna make sure that you understand this stuff or hopefully do. So new triangle here. I know that this side is 21.3. I know that this is a 63 degree angle. And I want to find out the length of this side. So once again, if this is my angle that we're working on, this would be the hypotenuse. Across from it would be the opposite. This becomes the adjacent. Since I'm working with adjacent and opposite, adjacent and opposite, I'm using my tangent. So we have here tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Put in the information that we know. 63 degrees is our theta. Opposite is 21.3. Adjacent, we don't know, it's x. Put that over one, cross multiply. We get tan 63 times x. And one times 21.3 is 21.3. Three. Now I want X on its own, so I'm just gonna divide both sides by tan 63. And I'm left with X is equal to, those cancel each other out of course, I get 21.3 over tan 63. Which would be 21.3, punch tan 63 in the calculator, I get one point nine six two six and x is equal to when i divide that up by one point nine six two six i get ten point nine so there we go ten point nine is the length of the adjacent side or the length of x anybody have a question nope good let's move on All right, our last question, a bit of a word question here. So, to measure the height of a building, building, I measured its shadow to be 20, 23 meters long. Um, uh, 
from the end of the shadow. to the top of the building, a 47 degree angle is formed. How tall is the building? All right, for space, I'm going to erase this question now that you have it written down. First of all, let's draw our building in here. So there's our building. I know that the shadow of the building is 23 meters long. And from that, if I was to join with the imaginary line from that building, from that point, end of the shadow to the top of the building, I would get... The question said a 47 degree angle right there. How tall is the building? Well, if this is our angle, this would be the hypotenuse. The height of the building is the opposite side and the 23, the shadow is the adjacent side. So let's figure this out because we have opposite and adjacent. We're gonna use our tan. So tan theta is opposite over adjacent. We know our angle is 47 degrees. We don't know our opposite, but we do know the length of our adjacent side. Cross multiplying, we get tan 47 times 23 is equal to x. Tan 47 is 1 decimal 0, 7, 2, 3 equals x and 24.7 equals x. There you go ladies and gentlemen, we just determined that that building is 24.7 meters tall based on the length of its shadow and this angle right here. All right, so that is that. Is that. I will be... Uh, Posting the homework for you. All right, signing out from uh, Joy Exotics Park in Oklahoma, Mr. Mitchell. We'll talk to you later. Run the jungle, let them roam their land, then stand back and learn.